Welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with the A.B. Corker Foundation for Mental Health. We are your co-hosts, Bridget and Terry. Each week, through intimate, candid conversations with guests, we explore different perspectives on and experiences of depression. We keep it real because the illness is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. We are not experts or therapists. We are sisters and best friends who live with depression and have interviewed hundreds of other people who do as well. We've learned that hearing others speak openly and without shame about their experiences makes it easier to believe depression is a common and treatable illness, not a personal failing. You are far from alone. Hello, Bridget. Hi, Terry. This is the time of year when the media all compile looks back or year in review pieces. Well, not here. We don't know what kind of a 2021 you had, but it was one that we don't want to relive. Thank you very much. What we are reviewing is our last season's episodes. So we can tie up this year, set it on the side, and begin a new year, ready to write new stories, both our own and those shared with us, in what will be our 20th season of this podcast. So before we dive in, we want to make a request. We did this at the end of the last episode, but for those of you who may not listen through to the end, we want to make sure you have the opportunity to have your voice heard too. We're compiling answers to the question, what does your depression tell you about you? What soul-destroying messages about yourself do you get from the illness that are designed, of course, to sound like truths? Please go to our website, givingvoicetodepression.com, and look in the upper left corner for our Record a Message button, or record your answer, with a first name or anonymously, as a voice memo on your phone, and email it to me, terry, T-E-R-R-Y, at givingvoicetodepression.com. We really need your help with this. And the more voices we can assemble, the more powerful the message will be. Thank you in advance. We begin this review of Season 19 with Episode 191, The Beginning of Hope. The title comes from our guest's reflection on finally speaking openly with a family member about her depression and other mental health struggles. So she ended up telling me that she had struggled all of her life with depression and that her mom had struggled her whole life with depression and that my dad had gone through periods of depression that I had never known about. Um, and it took away this big, this the big blanket of shame that I felt within my family. Um, it just like lifted and was like this big epiphany moment of like, wow, the people that I, the person that I love most, my Oma, also struggled with the same thing and she was still still very happy in her life and was able to live a very full life in the 18 minute episode lacy shares her transformation from the teenager whose depression and suicidal thoughts were so pervasive that she didn't know she would live past the age of 16 to her current self an adult social worker helping others manage their mental health again That's episode 191, The Beginning of Hope. In episode 192, we continued our conversation with Lacey from a 30,000-foot perspective. Rather than focusing on her personal mental health journey, in this episode we discuss what she's learned along the way, from her own challenges to her friends and her clients. Lacey now sees mental health as a spectrum, and she shows grace for all points on it. You go in and out of periods of hopelessness and hopefulness and going going through periods of feeling like, no, I, I got I have my feet under me again. And then something in life happens and your feet get swept out under you and you're back to square one. But I think that's the beauty of, of the work that we do is knowing that life is both the light and the dark. And if if, if recovery was a thing of like we're on this straight and narrow path and then we get to our destination, then, then what then, right? Like it's, it's, if you didn't have something to always be working at, then that wouldn't be what life is. It's just, it's mental health. is just like a reflection of life's journey in and of itself. Um, and it's all about just riding that roller coaster. 
To hear the full 20-minute episode featuring more Wisdom from the Pit, search for number 192, Recovery is Not Linear. Then, for November, we had a focus on veterans' mental health. The veterans' world is a world unto itself. The training, experiences, and memories that they have had are foreign to civilians. We revisited an interview with psychologist Dr. Michael McBride at the Veterans Administration about the ways those who have served to protect us can use lessons from their training to protect themselves from and during challenges to their mental health. They are the ones that I think have the best sort of model, the best handle on how we can live with this. And as they would tell you that when they're trying to live a sober life, they are doing it one day at a time. You do not get caught up in what's going to happen next week or next month or next year. You get through it today. And what you can do to stay sober or for all of us now during this pandemic and veterans too, what you can do to stay positive, to stay functional, to um, stay connected to people, that's a day-by-day task. Dr. McBride says every veteran is on his, her, or their own journey and needs to make choices that are best for them. The full 17-minute episode is called A Focus on Veterans' Mental Health. But how veterans can support their own mental health is just part of the equation. In the next episode, we dove into how civilians can support the veterans in their lives. Continuing our conversation with Dr. McBride, he asks, Have you taken the opportunity to reach out to any veterans in your life to ask about their service experience, their sacrifices, their current state of being, and whether the pandemic has made any mental health challenges they might have better or worse? What's important, I think, to number one, if you have a loved one who's a veteran, neighbor, friend, is it's important to kind of uh, have those conversations with them about their military experience. I think sometimes people are hesitant to ask them about, you know, tell me about your, your service in the military. What was it like when you were in the Army? What did you enjoy? Uh, people sometimes are afraid to ask those questions or to have that conversation. I would say the majority of my veterans are eager, in fact, are are just itching to kind of share their story of what it was like to serve their country. The full 19-minute episode is called Civilian Support of Veterans. In episode 193, Trauma Recovery, Race, and Mental Health, we explored the undeniable fact that trauma changes us and the way that we see and experience the world. We looked at the fact that recovery from our traumas is truly possible. Our guest was Dr. Maria Innocencia Amarante, a bilingual trauma therapist who has and is recovering from traumas in her own life and the messages she got about them. The interactions that I had with my community and scenarios that took place as a child that were traumatic, yet my community was not telling me that those things were traumatic. My community and my family uh, were giving me different messages. It's almost like, this is normal. This happens here. The full 21-minute candid and casual conversation is number 193, Trauma Recovery, Race, and Mental Health. Then, in an effort to help us all keep mental health in mind while preparing for what was then the upcoming holidays, we produced holidays and controlling what we can with licensed psychologist Dr. Maggie Mulqueen. We acknowledge that the pandemic has changed long-held traditions for many of us. There might be fewer people at your table, and it could be joyful. There may be some heartache, and there may be moments of gratitude that rather than saying, unless we have, you know, (laughs) a slew of people and are passing around food, like that's the only way to celebrate. And I think we can tolerate and allow, let alone support or encourage people to have a full array of feelings. So, you know, it's a both and. It's not saying it's going to be miserable because we're not all together, but nor do I have to have some kind of phony sense of, isn't this just great? Even with most of the holidays in the rear view now, the advice she offers can help us care for ourselves year-round. 
Again, the 18-minute remix is called Holidays and Controlling What We Can. Before we jump to the next episode about how writing really helps some people get the swirling thoughts out of their head, we wanted to share a quick blooper from the making of that episode. We have a wonderful audio engineer, hi Steve, who makes this sound quite a bit more polished and composed than we actually are. Enjoy this two-minute snippet of Terry trying to say the very first line of this episode's introduction. <clears throat> Okie dokie, so you'll say hi. Hi, Terry. Hello, Bridget. So we talk about mental health management technique. <laughs> We don't are talk they, very are we well. Both, are, they, are we recording on separate channels or not? Yes, yes, but okay. still be quiet. Hey, Bridget. So we talk I about mental... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably put up a blooper so people realize we're not always so serious. <laughs> All right, let's try this again from the top. You go ahead and say hi. Hi, Terry. Hello, Bridget. We talk about mental health management techs. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so glad it's you. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to try that again. I don't want to be smiling. We talk about mental health management techniques or tools for our toolboxes a lot. And there are a number of reasons for that. Full disclosure, there was actually one more take, but her reaction (laughs) about messing up again was a little bit, uh, shall we say, colorful, so we edited that out. I am actually wiping tears from my eyes listening to that, but you have the best laugh. Oh, I hope we're not the only people who get a chuckle out of that. I've probably played it ten times in my car just to hear you. It cheers me up. (laughs) So when I was finally able to speak in full sentences... We were able to share some of artist Gina Berry's story, including how journaling is a much-used instrument in her mental health toolkit. I call it getting the ugly out. Like, it's, it really is, like, getting all of the things and all of the hard stuff out of my brain and in a book. When I'm ruminating about something later on in the day, I can say, oh, I don't have to ruminate about that. It's it's safely put away in this journal and I don't have to think about it anymore. It's, it's here. There's something about having a tangible representation and knowing that it's not in me anymore and it's in a safe place. If you want to hear more, including a unique and creative technique that Gina uses to ensure the things she writes down are not read by anyone, including herself, please take 19 minutes to listen to episode 194 journaling to get the ugly out. Be sure to check out the picture with the episode so you get the full experience of what she's describing. Into December, then, we couldn't help but revisit some of the best holiday advice that we've ever heard, not only for how to respect ourselves, but how to show grace, understanding, and empathy to the people in our lives who may be struggling. Our guest was psychologist and life planner Dr. Anita Sands, who offered her advice on what she calls the best and kindest thing that you can do when extending a social invitation to someone in your life who may be struggling. Offer the out, which is to say you don't have to say yes or no. You can show if it's a good day. If it's not, you don't have to. You won't be disappointing anyone. I've heard from many of my clients with depression say it's one of the best things in the world because it's a very low stress way then of, of either being able to show up if at the last minute they feel they can make it. But then they also don't feel like they're letting anyone down if they don't. And they don't have to do that early decline um, and then realize that they actually could have made it, but they already declined. While Anita's advice was offered at the year's end, it certainly applies to any social situation year-round. The full 19-minute episode is called Keeping Mental Health in Mind When Planning for the Holidays. Our most recent shared story of lived experience this season was last week's episode, number 195. It is really hard to fix something that's broken with something that's broken. Something about Davy's story really struck a chord with listeners, maybe in the way Ted Lasso did, because of the purity and kindness behind his story and the way he told it. 
Whatever makes it so appealing, we encourage you to listen, since we've gotten more positive feedback on that episode than almost any of the other 250-plus we've produced. In it, Davey shares a number of the helpful things he's learned from the professionals on his care team, as well as a great metaphor that occurred to him when restoring a vintage chainsaw. Here's the strangest thing. When I took the first one apart, it had got hot and seized. And they took it apart, and the reason I got hot and seized was because there was sawdust and oil and, and just garbage that had filled and plugged the head up. I thought to myself, isn't that interesting? The head is this thing that causes this thing to seize. And I think I look at myself and think, my head, you know, it's full of sawdust and oil and grime, and there's not good air getting through that. And it just it just leaped at me, you know, and that was a, such a help for me, right? That full episode, called It's Really Hard to Fix Something Broken with Something That's Broken, is number 195. It's 22 minutes long. We thank all of our guests this season and remind you we'd love to include your voice in an upcoming episode about what our depression tells us about ourselves as humans. We're hoping to confirm a hunch that the bully is telling us all pretty much shockingly similar lies. Your voice will help us reveal that. Please, 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 please record your answer to what does your depression tell you about you. You can either record a voice memo on your phone and email it to Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, at givingvoicetodepression.com or go directly to our website, givingvoicetodepression.com, and look for the red record button at the top. You don't need to leave your name. It can be done anonymously, but we do need your voice. We also want to invite you to check out the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook community if you're not already there. You'll find daily posts and the support of more than 10,000 other people who will remind you that you are not alone when depression takes hold. Speaking of our Facebook community, we want to acknowledge and thank dear Sarah, who seven days a week for years has lovingly monitored that community and its every post and comment to ensure that it remains respectful and responsive. Thank you, Sarah, and we wish you the happiest of New Year's. We sincerely wish each and every one of you a kinder and healthier New Year. And we'll be back in the New Year with more shared stories of resilience and hope. And thank you so much for being a part of our 2021. Please take care of yourselves and each other. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate your experience of depression, or better understand how to support someone else's. We invite you to join us for daily posts on the Giving Voice to Depression Facebook page and on Twitter and Instagram at Voice Depression. It is a comfort to be among fellow travelers on depression's dark road. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up. If someone else is, listen up.